not about electricity. We are talking here about economy, because energy is an essential tool to stimulate economy. Without energy, there is no economy. So it means we need to have energy, stable, reliable, and with which will potential Africa have today. So on the solar, on biomass, on wind, and hydro. So we are one of the continents which can really make the best use of that. And of course, the investment cost is high, but the operation cost, it makes all the sense. It will allow us to create more jobs. It will allow us to put all the infrastructure in place. It will give us the energy securities, but it will also allow Africa to make the world a bit more cleaner. Access to energy is not the goal, but it is not the, the everything. As I mentioned, energy is a tool. It's a tool for local economic developments. But it's not the end by itself. It means this is the issue, how the economy can benefit from energy. And then when we can make a transformation, when we can reduce the rural exodus, when we can also reduce the impact of climate change, when we can make people more resilient to climate change, when we can start the bottom-up democracy, because when you have energy in that way, you have the jobs, then people are more empowered. You create more self-confidence. So it means 100% renewable energy in the area, in the countries or continent where, you know, more than 60% in some places don't have access to renewable uh, to modern energy services. It's possible. Today, in Germany, it will take time for you. You will think, oh, what I will do with my, uh, all the nuclear house. Because you are talking here in Europe about the energy conversions. Move from one paradigm to another new paradigm. We are talking in Africa about building, you know, having access. It's that access. You don't need to go in a 50, solu 50 years solution when they were not, this was the only solution at that time. We can switch using today technologies. So considering like we have a train which is moving, it's a matter of when you are jumping in the train. So it's faster and easy to go inside the train when the train is starting, but when the train will start to be already at 100, uh, 150 kilometers per hour, then it will be very, very difficult. So for, I don't think, we, I will say really clearly, I don't see an alternative when going to renewables. It's just a matter of heading one, two, or five years more. But there are no alternatives. And, uh, so the solution today is to take a right, you know, we need a strong leadership from Europe. We need a strong leadership from Africa to say, we have to do this now. And then, you need to have an appropriate financing mechanism in order to for these women and these men to have the appropriate tools and make the best use now of the electricity available and then improve the life and the life of their community, create jobs and so on. And that is the second phase. The two have to go together. When you provide electricity and then you have to provide mechanism for local economic development. And that doesn't need to be a grant. It just has to be the micro finance structure we have today in place in many countries in Africa. If Europe is not ready, then all the continent will take a place. Asia, Latin America, Brazil today is very strongly present in Africa. China is present, India is present in Africa. So it means Europe is not the only place. So it means it's better for uh, advantages for Europe to jump in the train of uh, energy, sustainable and renewable energy supply for Africa now than it will be in 10 years. Because in 10 years, maybe European industry now focusing in Asia, when there will not be market there, 
it will be late for them to penetrate in African market. But now they can penetrate. Of course, it's a small market. But together, Europe and Africa can make this market bigger. So I think the key issue is to have a leadership, white policy in place, and then not to see short terms return, because everything is about that. When I want to invest so much million dollars or euros, and then I want to have my return in five years. We don't have the infrastructures. This needs to be built up. So we need to see the long terms. And uh, that long terms, so the governments of both con continent have a great role to play. It's a good beginning that EU European leaders and African leaders come together around the partnerships and around energy. So that is a very good beginning. It's a great tool for us to advocate renewable energy. But it's very important also that we keep our eyes open that that partnership will not give to Africa the old European energy solution, but it gives to Africa the new European energy solution. That it make an example like Germany, like Spain, to us, not other examples which are more centralized, grid based on fossil fuels. We from the civil society, when I talk about civil society, I'm talking about private sectors and NGOs. Maybe we have to maybe choose this as a platform to really make our voice, you know, uh, to, in order that our voice can reach these decision makers. And uh, so I think this is a wonderful uh, initiative and we can wish only success to it. And we also have to look at it very closely to make sure that it will bring to us only the best uh, technology. I'm not seeing the partnership as only Europe coming to help Africa, but I see the partnership as really partnership, mutual benefits in all terms, for government to government, from NGO to NGO, and from private sector to private sectors.